Hi guys, welcome back to another Agroforestry Academy video. Uh, today we're going to be talking to you about the cow system that we're developing here at Sitio de Jazz, Brasilia, Brazil. Uh, just before we get into it, you know guys, if you like the content, if you, if you dig us in any way or if you think some of our information can be useful to you or to some of your friends, do share it, do like it, do subscribe to our channel. That's the best way to keep us, you know, keep on bringing more content to you guys on a weekly basis there all right so let's go straight into it uh, this is a cow system what does that mean you know we had a black yada here our cows have always roamed here in the black yada but now we're not only splitting up uh, the pasture but we're also introducing triple lines of trees every 12 meters you see so here's very clear what what we're doing here you see what triple lines of tree 12 meters of pasture triple lines of tree 12 meters of pasture and so on so this is uh one design we've been developing all right so obviously we have in this triple line of trees we're gonna have things that gotta feed the cows all right but also we're gonna have you know long-term harvest with you know, we've got all this cedar cedar here we call cedar you know cedar uh you know um lots of wood lots of wood here we have obviously quite a nice bit of eucalyptus to feed back to the system and we're gonna have a lot of a uh, lot of other types of wood uh that's noble to our region so you know just working on the strata working on them long-term caching you know people that deal with cattle you know they've got the pasture why not put in some long-term crops there for you to harvest for your kids you know who didn't want their grandparents to have planted for them Right, so I know this is a, a some of, some of the trees here are 15 years, others are 40 years to harvest. Right, some of the uh, wood that we're planting, but you know the years are gonna go past. That one thing's for sure, 40 years will pass. Uh, you'll only harvest if you've planted. If you haven't planted, you're not gonna harvest. 40 years will pass. Who will harvest in 40 years from now? Only who planted today. So just keep that in mind, you know, when we, when, when we're like, you know, uh, not so keen on planting such long-term crops, you know, just be sure that those years will pass. That's a guarantee. All right. So there will be a harvest here. Okay. So we've gone ahead. We've planted uh, some acai here as well. So what does that mean? Our teacher, you know, he teaches us that uh, we plant what we know goes well in the region. We know it goes well here, so we're going to plant this for guarantees. But we also plant what we would like to go well. You know, something that, let's see if it works. Because a lot of the studies, that they're, they're made in monocultural uh, systems. A lot of studies aren't with agroforestry systems. There's very, very, very little study on, on how plants can react. So obviously the, the bioma here is the Cerrado, central Brazil. It's our savanna, equivalent to our savanna out here. Obviously it's the rainy season now, so it's good for us to plant. But it's, this is not the region for acai. But you know, if we plant enough forest around it, if I'm giving it a couple of bananas around it on both sides, I'm giving it that condition, you know, I would really love it. Because I eat acai every day here in my house. We're all addicted to acai. It's becoming quite dangerous this I mean every day I pick my daughter up from school and we've got to go acai shop or, or there's trouble in the car so you know I'm gonna go ahead and plant what we would like to harvest as well uh, not only what I know goes well in the region so we've got guarantees here we're planting a lot of citrus bananas a lot of coffee on all three lines there's gonna be coffee on all three lines there's gonna be eucalyptus on all three lines there's going to be bananas. That's that's for us here in our region, the basic. We've got uh, like the skeleton, the mother, the, the fundamental plants for most agroforestry systems. You know, we've got the coffee, which is a great cash crop for the understory. Not many other understory plants has such great uh, prospect here in our region. And then we've got the bananas that guarantee that probably will pay for the whole system once you harvest you know we're planting 650 bananas in two hectares so you know that will probably pay for the whole system just the bananas so everything else will come as a bonus and the bananas is so key 
in feeding back all that water to the soil once we, we harvest and we chop it. And we're already chopping it before we even harvest because, you know, we're taking all the daughters and things that are coming through. The bananas are so key for the stimulation for other growing plants to try follow them and try, you know, peak, you know, compete with that with that height, with that strata, that stimulation for other plants to grow and compete with the bananas in a healthy competition. Uh, the bananas, you know, there's just multiple, multiple, multiple. So, and then we've got the eucalyptus, obviously, uh, you know, for many years, it will be feeding the system, we'll be cutting it and cutting it, we, you know, we've been through this many times, we're planting water with eucalyptus here in the farm through all the cuttings and all the feed in the soil and giving that organic matter and, you know, keeping that moisture in the soil with all that organic matter that it can powerfully produce for the drought and keeping that moisture in the soil, giving us condition for these plants to live through the drought with no irrigation. So uh, yeah, the eucalyptus planting water for us. And then in a few years from now, we can, you know, harvest some logs. So really what I'm gonna be transferring, uh, the fencing, the wiring, cause we're putting wires to protect these triple lines. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna be using cuts of eucalyptus that we have in the house, right? It's not treated, so it won't last many years in the rain. These are all re-sprouts of big eucalyptus trees that we've brought down. Um, and all this matter from these plants they're all going to be fed into this into the system and you know all, all the trunks are going to become you know trunks so we can you know tie up all the fencing and you know have the cows really just in the pasture but what will happen then since we're planting a line of eucalyptus right at the border of the edges of you know the edges of the of, of the beds we're going to transfer the fencing the wiring onto these trees to these eucalyptus trees in about two years from now so then we're gonna have like a live a live uh you know fence and uh you know that that will be long term real quality there okay so i mean sure i could just split up my pasture and have them like you know the cows going into little squares of pastures obviously you know there is the mathematics about this you know how we keep the cows in in smallest in smaller confined pasture so that they can cut everything uh, equally um, and they can also go ahead and manure everything nicely equally as well because when they're in in great large pastures it's not a clean cut okay uh, they're there they're stepping for longer periods and and the manure is being spread out is not concentrated once we've got you know the most amount of cows in the least amount of time in each pasture it means they can be in the least amount of time they, so it can have a greater length of rest so we're here we're going to have the cows here for two maximum three days and then it's going to be 45 days until they come back so that's 45 days of rest where there's been no stepping and that's going to give the soil condition to live well and it's going to be a nice clean cut the manure is going to be nice and spread evenly throughout the pasture so here we plan uh, 10 cows in a space of 1,200 meters. We're planning maybe three days in each one of these pastures. Obviously here, we've planted more more bushes. We've planted the Mexican sunflowers. We planted some, some leguminoses as well and uh, things like that to for the cows to eat in consortium with the black area. Plus we're planting uh, cassavas and corn and other things to feed to the cows in the tree rows, which we're gonna harvest, elephant grass as well, we're gonna be harvesting. And some of this is gonna be stored so that in the drought, we have food for the cows. So we're producing food for the drought in the tree rows, you know, and they're, they're pasturing here nice in during the rain season. Okay, so, I mean, why else would we plant trees? Obviously we know uh, out here, very hot very hot climates very dry at times of the year cows do suffer we know how much they need their condition how much it's important for the cows to be in the shade to be in the fresh air and it's important for the pasture as well you know people go on about how much sun you know how much it grows with so many hours of sunlight per day but you know what it's so much sun it's so hot it's so dry that with the shade even if it means less hours of sun a day it really you see that greener that that 
thriving grass with that half sun. 12 meters, there's gonna be lots of sun coming in, but you've got that half shade there, really helping us out in, in tough times of the year. Uh, also, we get a whole root structure working here, which helps decompact the soil from within. That means that, I mean, in a small scale, the impact is small, but if you're talking about a large scale system, where you know rain it's raining on hundreds or even thousands of hectares and you know if there's no trees there it means there's no root system it means that the rain is falling and it's not penetrating the soil you know it's all compacted we really need a system of root system so that when it rains the water penetrates back into the soil deep down right so you know it's so key for sustainability you know, it's so key for sustainability for cow systems. All right, you know, I know, I know there's lots of uh, vegetarians, you know, there's, there's a few reasons why people become vegetarian, isn't there? Some of them uh, feel sorry for the animals, other like feel it's a bit disgusting to eat uh, dead meat, uh, others, you know, don't want to have impact on the planet. And most is like all three plus other reasons, many other reasons why you could become vegetarian. But, you know, as far as the impact on the planet, because we can't be hypocrite. You know, there's milk, there's cheese, there's dairy. You know, we're talking about vegan style now. So if you, if you want to, you know, and we respect that, for sure we respect that, right? And admire that. But, you know, I eat cheese. You know, I'm, I'm now producing my cheese. I'm producing my yogurt, my butter. So that's, that's a real great breakthrough since I'm going to consume this. Um, so I mean as far as environmentally as, as the impact you know as far as reducing the impact comes with you know really making it a sustainable cow system we, it's key that we have trees in the system so that we keep on collecting water as it rains so that we can keep on feeding the cows water because otherwise everything dries out and we've seen it many times here what happens, it dries out and then, you know, just lands become just abandoned. And people just dilling the well, dr drilling the well deeper and deeper. So it's like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll just dig it deeper and just dig it deeper. So we're just exploiting, we're just extracting. We're not giving anything back and the water's not returning to the system. We, we're just feeding back chemicals to feed the grass. So really, uh, there's no sustainability in traditional cow system, let's be honest, in the long term. And, and it's such a big problem for us because it's such an advancing system, you know, monocultural cow, monocultural brachiata and things like that. And people just really bringing down trees. So, uh, yeah, let's have a real good thought about that. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, you know, we're going to keep on bringing you posts and keep you posted on our Facebook, uh, on our Instagram and through here, our YouTube channel. We're going to be showing you how this develops. All right. So at the moment. We haven't received our coffee plants yet. Our coffee plants are coming in in about 15 days. That's a real, uh, that's a real bummer for us because you know we got all the holes ready, all the beds, and we really want to get that coffee in so we can close and move on. But it's just uh, a case of when when the seedlings are going to be ready. We've really pushed it. We're planting these banana seedlings. They've only had a month in the sack from you know the little clone seedlings so they come in with no disease and things like that you know and it's just uh we we have a lot of banana seedlings that we can take from our other forests but it's just uh money wise it just costs too much and the manpower to be taking out you know 600 bananas seedlings if you've got to really bring out that bulb from from the bunch of bananas it's just cost too much it's just too much manpower when i can bring these in for for about a dollar each you know at this size where they've not spent too much time at the greenhouse so i've managed to cut costs obviously if they're like a year old six month old seedlings then that's gonna generate costs for the greenhouse so we get them very very young so that we can also economically but obviously we like we like the young stuff here we like it developing you see some of these palm house they come in and the guys at the greenhouse they're selling it to you they're like wow look how big it is how nice it is but really it's not ideal for us to plant bigger trees we like to plant them small, let them develop here in the location. You know, we can see what happens here. It's big and it's fragile. Basically, it's been brought up in a greenhouse. And when it comes out here with the heavy rain and the big winds, it just 
you know it hasn't got that kind of strength so we really really want to bring in the seedlings you know nice and young you see with these uh cedar wood with these cedars you know the guys they really had like uh they had some they had some meter tall ones and they really try and sell us those ones as if they're the they're the bombastic ones i was like no 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 i really want the smaller ones i want them to develop here otherwise i'm gonna have these tall thin uh plants that you know that don't stand the wind of the valley you know we're in the valley like major wind and storms come through here so these guys are all warriors the assay is coming nice and small but the palm hearts they've come in taller and as you can see they're always breaking through but you know we know it's going to re-sprout it's, it's, it's not a biggie but uh we j there's no need for us to have wasted that energy there we plant it nice and young okay so i mean there's so much to talk about here we've got pork beans we've got lots of stuff going in the system so as it develops we'll be showing you all right so we've done some some uh tractor work here and a lot of hand hand work as well all right so from the agroforest academy crew you know comment question share you know let's talk about it and i hope this one's you you know i hope you can identify and you know and so we've got some some manure coming in we like to work with manure when we first start obviously we started in a poor area of poor soils all right so i like to give it a nice pump of manure in the beginning and then from there the forest will feed itself so obviously we're planting uh, a lot of service plants to feed back the system okay but initially you know they're not born yet so it's all seeds and it's all you know bulbs and seeds being planted but initially we really need to get in that manure so we've got several types of rock dust some fancy nice rock dust and we've got a chicken manure and we've got some next fancy compost with ash and everything so some nice fancy stuff going in initially all right so this is what i can say to you for now let's keep in touch from the agua forest academy crew Gennaro in the house sit you the jazz say hello to my boy felipe up in reservado cajueru yo yo to all the boys in florida in costa rica in india and all you other guys cool guys following us till next time